Opioid epidemic is taking a heavy toll on children of the addicts. When parents are addicted, locked up, or going into treatment, what, what happens to their children? Opioid abuse has made thousands of Americans incapable of caring for their children. And that has drawn attention to grandparents, many of whom are receiving the same phone call from Child Protective Services or law enforcement. When you get the call and there's never been a formal removal, the options are going to be come get the kids or they're going into foster care. I'm sure you had your own plans, right? And then, and then you get this phone call. My um, ex-husband that uh, received the call because they knew I was at work and they did call me to inform me what should we do. When they get that call and decide to raise their grandchild, they become a new kind of caregiver. I mean, at that stage, I was already raised my own children, and now you have to start all over. No longer a typical grandparent, but not a parent either. We are the ones who hear the crying at night. We're the ones that go to, to the schools when they have uh, Mother's Day events. But yeah, we're grandma. How about Father's Day? Well, I could make a mustache and put on a hat and go, well, I did whatever I had to do. Whatever I had to do. There's actually a name for this. It's called kinship care, when a relative or close family friend takes responsibility for raising a child. It's a type of child raising that has always existed, but it's becoming more common. For over 20 years, Jerry Wallace has been advocating for kinship caregivers in New York State, sometimes even bringing his pet dog, Cookie, with him. Yeah. No, oh, Cookie, you gotta go. I'll put it right out. I'll be right back. He was recently in Rockland County, visiting caregivers at a monthly support group. When parents aren't there anymore, death, you know, tragedies or whatnot, relatives have stepped in and raised children. In non-relative foster care, the government places a child with a family and provides services that include legal assistance, financial benefits, and case management. But in kinship care, the situation can be different. If they receive a call, the relative has to make a choice become a licensed foster parent, which is called formal kinship, or volunteer to raise the child on their own without official custody in what's known as informal kinship. In the US, around 130,000 children live in formal kinship, and nearly two and a half million live in informal kinship care. Those who choose to participate in the foster care system have access to government services, but that can include regular visits from Child Protective Services, court appearances, or mandated caregiver training, all of which can be disruptive for the child and the grandparents. So many people opt for an informal kinship, which has less official involvement, but also limits access to resources that can help raise the child. Unlike most foster parents, informal kinship caregivers can have trouble enrolling kids in schools and accessing medical services and other benefits because they may lack legal custody of the children. Kinship families might not have access to typical foster care services, but there are a few programs that offer help, like the Child Only Grant, a temporary assistance benefit that provides a small amount of money to help care for the child. You're taking children into your home that you didn't anticipate having. And all of a sudden you have a kid who needs school supplies, he needs sneakers. I constantly hear about sneakers and the cost of sneakers. The problem is, there's no easy way to find out about that help. If you don't go the foster care route and you're on your own, it's the luck of the draw whether you're even gonna find out there are services. Maybe you're one grandma who said to me, Child Protective Services gave me my grandchild eight years ago. This is the first time I found out there's help. So that's just because there hasn't been the procedural mechanisms to make sure that it didn't happen. The Rockland County Support Group helps bridge that gap. Once a month, they meet at Volunteer Counseling Service, where Rosa Serrano Delgado is the program director. When I was hired in this position about, I think it's maybe 12 years now, um, I had never heard of the term kinship. I really had never heard of the term kinship. What would you have needed? What would have been helpful to you? You know, as, you, as you're entering this journey of raising these this children. The drugs have taken her over. Their kids, oh, why do you allow her to come back mine? She died a year ago. Mm -hmm. so I so I had, had her cremated. It is due to um, the pandemic, the opioid pandemic that we have here, and many people are, know somebody that, um, that has lost a loved one. This population, 
of families raising a relative's child were lacking support. Everyone else seemed to have something in place, but not these kinship families. But even if caregivers are made fully aware of their options, they still might avoid formal kinship because of the approval process. Sometimes the concern is, I am older, I'm, I'm not making a lot of money, so how is this going to affect the way they view me? Are they gonna see me as capable? Am I physically capable of raising this child or these children? Do I have enough resources? The other stigma that I've heard, which is really interesting, is that they're afraid that people might judge them because obviously something has happened with your child that they're not able to care for their own child. Um, so what kind of parent were you? Kinship caregivers can feel isolated, and that's where these support groups come in. They really feel that they're amongst a group of people that really get them, that really understand them, that they can really be honest with. You know, why is grandma raising the child? And where are the parents? And well, don't question it so much. Let's, we all have different um, situations at hand. Try counseling the emotional stuff, which still is visible at times. Absolutely. That's a big one, emotional, right? Sometimes they believe that you're keeping my dad or my mom away from me. You know, you, you did something to keep mom or dad away from me. And sometimes the parent is angry at you because you're caring for the child. Is that right. correct? Right. So you... Groups like these are providing crucial support to kinship families and communities across America. In New York, Jerry runs a website and hotline that points kinship caregivers towards local, state, and federal services, like Rose's support group in Rockland County. We're keeping kids out of foster care because they can go live with their families. That doesn't mean we should abandon those families. We should provide them the minimal supports they need to really help these kids have good outcomes. There is also a financial benefit to kinship care. In a recent report, a grandparents' advocacy group estimated that kinship care saves taxpayers $4 billion every year by keeping children out of foster care. In spite of the benefits, kinship caregivers continue to struggle in a fragmented system. What really needs to be done is every state needs a specialized kinship program with the outreach dollars to reach down in the community and the coordination with the other service systems so that they're aware of them so that these families are contacted. Whether it's the education system, mental health services or the courts, they should all be pointing these families to someone who knows what to tell them about resources and about their rights.